Hi guys, my name's Daniel. We're down here at Discover 4x4 in Melbourne and we're checking out the latest Conqueror UEV 490. This is the Platinum Edition. It's the latest uh, product that Conqueror has and it's the MI21 series. So I thought we might start out by showing you some differences of the MI21 and some great upgrades that they've done. So I'm just gonna walk around the outside. I'll start at the front, we'll do the side, do the back, end up at the other side and just give you a quick rundown. So the front of the UEV 490 is extremely tough. I think it's one of the appeals for the 490 edition. People love the look, they love the tough feel and look of it. If we, uh, at the front here, your two storage boxes, they're now powder coated. So you'll notice um, in a lot of the previous 490s, they are a checker plate. And for those of you that have done a lot of touring in Australia, uh, checker plates can be extremely bright, especially in your mirror, but also in oncoming traffic. So, uh, so now it's a, a nice powder coated finish, which is very durable, but most importantly, you don't have to wear three pairs of sunglasses when you're driving on the open road with some glare when the sun hits it. And let's face it, you buy a 490 so you can take it somewhere where you can be off road out in the, in the blistering sun of Australia. It's got a DO35 um, hitch on the front, a great Australian product, got full articulation. Uh, I've had the experience of towing with a DO35 and I can tell you, once you tow with one of these, you'll never go back. They are simple, they are easy, and for anybody who's had a story where perhaps their tow balls come loose, that'll never happen in a DO35. So one of the best bits of equipment you can have right there. Moving across here, um, what, um, what I think is a great feature, of course, everything in the 490 Platinum, everything we see here is standard, right? So it's got an axe, which is really good for when you pull over and you want to chop up some wood. And when we open the first storage box on the side here, we actually have a shovel mounted in there. But most importantly, um, I wanted to show you the Vi-Air um, air pump here. It's absolutely sensational. So a lot of people uh, that do touring will end up at some stage heading into sand. So what, what we've actually got here for you, we've got an eight litre air tank from Vi-Air, which is sensational quality, and we've got the air inlet here. So what you can do is you simply plug in your hose. Your hose has been designed and it's long enough that it'll reach all around the entire um, camper trailer, of course, but it'll not only reach your car, but it'll also reach your mate's car as well. So you can help them out. And you can see it's a commercial grade uh, reading and dial as well. So as far as um, getting your tyres back up to the right PSI after you've enjoyed some time on the sand, won't be any easier than with one of these. So I've had the experience of using the Vi-Air pump and for, oh, mate, pumps ain't pumps. I think everybody who uses one will know and understand what we're talking about. They're fantastic. And there's also underneath in here, the actual shovel is, has got a bracket at the top. It's a bit hard to see on the camera, but again, let's think about the circumstances that you'd actually use a shovel. Um, call it dirt, call it, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, usually when you're putting a shovel back into your storage box, it's not blistery clean. So it's great to be able to grab it. You put it up the top here, you clip the bracket on and it's done. So you don't have mud going through your inner storage box. Um, if we just talk to the awning for a second, a really clever feature on the new edition um, Conqueror 490, it's got what's called the bat wing awning. So when you do awnings on both sides, uh, they actually join together at the front here and the tension between the two uh, is what keeps them up, which is a really great feature. The awnings are genuinely easy. I'll show you those on another video because again, for those of us that camp out there, uh, awnings can be a really frustrating um, thing to set up. But in this case, we've only got one side of the awning set up for you. And what this does is it tensions straight onto the side of the sleeping quarters. So when you, um, when you set this up, if you don't have the bat wing extension in, you simply tie it to the side here, you pull it nice and tight. You can see as far as tension's concerned, you don't have to be Hercules um, to do it. And I'm also not the tallest person in the world and I can reach everything um, here nice and easily. Now, reaching everything is also got to do with the airbags um, that are in the vehicle as well. They're a Firestone airbag, they're heavy duty. Um, they, are, they are literally, the, the, the wall thickness is like a tire. So um, I haven't heard one of, one of these ever getting damaged because of the strength of them. But the thing and the advantage when you're setting up this trailer, you can just drop it straight down, reach everything, and then you can level it or you can lift it up a little bit later if you wanted to as well. Just one of the practical um, things with this. In the, um, in, the, in the very front here, you've got your gas storage. Now in your gas storage there, you can fit two nine cylinders, um, but it's also got the brackets, so you can put smaller cylinders in there as well. So you're not restricted to the, to the large nine cylinders. And, um, and there's just a quick dial that goes between, so you can use your gas 
um, in the cooker. Uh, because storage is such a premium, and this has got plenty of it, uh, you can also, in some cases, if you're not going too far off the grid and you're happy with a nine kilo uh, bottle, then you've actually got quite a large storage um, container under here, which I'll show you when it's packed up. But a lot of people are putting one bottle in the side there with a reader that tells how, how much gas is in there. And on the other side, it's really good for general storage items. Sometimes storage items like rags, jumpers, things that won't rattle around or don't necessarily need to um, be in a secure location. So that's just another feature um, that, that uh, we notice the front box is used for. These things are designed to go anywhere. They are extreme heavy duty. You can tell by looking at the chains. At first they're intimidating. You look at those and you go, yep, I understand. I had a recent experience only last week um, towing something where the tow ball unhitched. Uh, the chains crossed. First time I've actually experienced it on the road. It was my own fault. Um, but I can tell you the chains being crossed is just absolutely vital. So chains of this nature and this strength are critical because there's a lot of weight in this. Um, it's a tough military style camper trailer. Those chains will get you out of trouble. Um, we might just um, focus on the gas inlet for one minute as well. This is a slide out kitchen. Uh, it's really, really easy when you pull over on the side of the road, even if you wanted to make yourself a cup of tea or get yourself a nice cool drink, it just pulls straight out. Um, but the gas, the actual gas plugs into the side here. So again, what you're not doing, you're not fiddling around with moving things when you do want to do a little cook up. You might want to just have some sausages on the cooker for lunch, or you simply do when you pull over, you grab your gas, it's got your Australian approved plug, you plug it straight in, your gas is on and, um, and off you go. So you don't need to remove the bottles, you don't need to bring the bottles closer, you don't need to hang the bottles and, um, and this is as good inlet and safe um, inlet as you can uh, ever want when you're camping. So just another reason that it's really nice and simple and well thought out. So let's just move on to the kitchen for a second, okay? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the right and I'll move to the left. What we have here, is an 82 litre fridge freezer. Good thing about this, fridge, freezer, 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 fridge, fridge, you choose. It's really, really simple. Um, I think a fridge freezer is a really good combination if you're going a little bit further um, into the bush because you can have frozen food that can thaw out when you turn it back into a fridge. And it comes standard with this remote control. And this remote control is really clever as well because typically what would happen is sometimes, for, again, for those who have had a fridge that perhaps has stopped working or a circuit's broken or something when you're on the road, um, if it's in your trailer and you can't see or hear what's going on, sometimes by the time you get to your destination, it's too late. So this remote control is designed to actually stay in the car with you. It will show you uh, what the temperatures are at all times. An alarm will go off if there's a fault or an issue. But how cool is this? It's got a little solar panel on one side. So you just throw it on the top of your dash, the solar panel will keep this um, completely charged at all times. So that's designed for in the car, so if there's something that goes wrong, you want to get straight to it and try and fix it. And um, so that's all standard. Coming across here, you've got your two burner Dometic gas cooker. Uh, again, as I showed you before, you just simply plug in your gas and off you go. I'll show you where you store your pots, your pans and everything you need for cooking. Um, as we progress through. Uh, attention to detail is a really big thing here. This is your sink. You've got hot water and cold water, of course. You can swivel between the two. But a very, very clever thing about this, again, for those campers out there who have been quite remote, you can fit 150 litres of water into, um, into the tanks on the UEV 490. Uh, and water's precious. It's really precious, as you know. 150 litres a week off the grid. Um, I think you, know, you have to conserve every drop. So usually what happens here is you can put your dirty plates in one side, you can start washing them on the other side, but most importantly, these are removable and come out so you can retain that water um, that you have used. So at the end of the night, you can put your fire out or your campfire out or what, whatever you need to do. The other thing as well, which is great, um, let's just say you're at a caravan park, same thing, you've had a great cook up, all the dirty dishes go into here and then opposed to having those um, portable ones that you've got to carry across to the camp kitchen, all you simply do is pull these out, take them to the camp kitchen and off you go. Uh, the thing, another small attention to detail is you'll see here there's these little slots that have been put into the bracket and these slots line up with the slots on the bucket. So what that means is when you slot this in, it's in there and it, it actually doesn't fall out. Otherwise it would slide straight off. 
The other thing I really like about having the buckets up here is that if you've got a normal sink, then usually what happens, you've got a little bit of an eyesore because you've got a, you've got a drain hose going straight down to what's usually a bucket here on the, um, on the ground. The one thing about a bucket on the ground is um, a, it's a bit of an eyesore when you, when you pull up and you want to have a visually appealing look at your camper trailer, that's one thing. But the other thing as well, I don't know how many times at night I've stubbed my toe on something like that on the ground. And also the other thing that makes it a bit tough, usually the buckets get a bit bigger because you get sick of emptying them. And when they do get a bit bigger, then you're bending over, you're trying to pick something up. It's just, it's just a, it's, it's not the ideal option. So these are sensational portable sinks, okay? The other thing to talk to on the kitchen is what Conquer has become absolutely famous for, which is these two drawers that are just in, in behind the cooker. Now these have changed to a nice snap lock drawer. When you open them up, everything you see here comes as standard, okay? Very, very well thought out and it has become a bit of a Conqueror trademark. The bowls, something simple about the bowls, they're quite deep, which is good. You can have them for children, you can have them for adults, but even these are deep enough to be on the table as a, as a um, communal salad bowl as well, which is what we've used them for, which has been fantastic. The other thing as well, with these larger cups, sometimes you can use the smart storage here for slightly different purposes. So these are fantastic plastic um, cups for, for when you're traveling. But if you only had three or four or five of you, then you can take one or two out. You've got extra storage spots in there that you can put whatever you like in there. But I can tell you having used these, they're top notch. Having everything in its own place is making the uh, preparation for camping second to none, but also the time, what I call time to relaxation. So when you go camping, uh, my original camper was about a three hour setup. Uh, as you progress in your life, you, sli you get slightly better equipment, you get a little bit faster at it, you get a little bit wiser. Um, so your time to relaxation when you pull this thing up is probably about half an hour, but your time to a nice cold refreshing beer before you start unpacking your trailer is literally 30 seconds. Um, then we look at the bottom one. The bottom one here, everything has its place. I love how everything slots straight in. You've got forks, knives, spoons, you've got um, tongs, you've got a bottle opener, you've got a sharp knife. You've got some plastic plates here. The plates are a generous size. And um, the great thing about these plates, um, again, a Conqueror signature, very well thought out, is they do fit into your laundry, um, your laundry bucket there. And um, uh, there are some little things that we tend to add to this. Uh, it's like a cutlery drawer at home. You don't want to put too much in there. You might find there's some things you don't need. For example, when we're camping, I've never had the need for a ladle. And, um, but, and, and space is premium, so I would tend to remove that, but I'd put in a pair of longer tongs. But the beautiful thing about this, it's all felt lined in there, so it doesn't rattle, but you've got room, you've got room, and you're not spending half an hour in the dark going through a bucket trying to find where are my long tongs, where am I, where's my long fork, where's my carving knife, everything's right there. The other thing as well, which makes it easy, sometimes in pack up, you just wanna get home, when you get home, you can grab everything out, throw it in the dishwasher, um, your trailer can be in the garage. You can put it straight back in here without having to unlock the entire trailer. I'd have to say as far as workability, serviceability, uh, this would be one of the best camp kitchens I've ever used. And I think it's one of the most serviceable camp kitchens. The other thing which I think is fantastic for the design and engineering is you actually don't need a bracket stand at the end. It, it, it can hold its own weight. Um, I, um, I encourage you to come and try this camp kitchen out. It's probably best in market. Which leads me to another thing, which is actually quite a practical thing in the camp kitchen, which is the camp table. So uh, this camp table, on, when you initially look at it, you think, hmm, that might be a little bit low. It seems like quite a low table. And, um, and for those of you who have been doing a bit of study on Conqueror, which I and most people do because it's quite a passionate driven brand, would know that this just folds up and goes straight under your bed in the trailer. It almost forms your wall, so to speak. So when you bring it out, you don't have to pull out a table, which is usually the biggest item in your camper trailer. You don't have to pull out a table. You don't have to lift it up in half. You don't have to stick some legs out and try and tackle this, this, this table. You've got a table that's already in the trailer. But when you look at it, you go, gee, that's a little bit low. But again, for those who have sat around a table, 
in camp chairs. I don't know about you, but I tend to sit down in my camp chair and I end up eating on tables like this because camp chairs are actually quite low. So the best thing about this, it can become a, a grazing table. The kids can use it and walk around the grazing table no problems. But as adults, you can sit around this table and it's actually at the right height for you to enjoy your meal. It's a, it's a very, very well thought out feature. The other thing I love about it is that it's a non-porous, of course, and, um, and it's easy to clean. So the tables that I grew up with were, were the very hard plastic tables for weight, of course, but you start getting rings, you get entrenched dirt into them, you spray and wipe it, mate, you put kerosene over it, the thing doesn't clean. So in the end, this becomes a, a spray and wipe job and you've got yourself a fantastic camp kitchen, fully usable out in the bush, okay? Now, let's continue on to the pantry and the bar. Now, um, when it comes to the bar, you can put some nice drinks in there um, because you usually have your beers or your, or your white wine in your fridge keeping cold. What a lot of people tend to do here, maybe put a couple of bottles of gin, a uh, bottle of vodka. It can be a, a really nice um, uh, you know, drink to have at the end of the night, a bottle of port. Um, sometimes I've seen people put shoreways in there as well, you know, so if you're having dinner out here, you think, mate, where, well, there's mozzies, where are those shoreways? Just grab your shoreway, straight out of here, throw it on your table, turn it on, see you later, mozzies. So it's a really practical um, area to use. And the other thing I've got to really stress upon the point of this Conqueror is its serviceability. So when you look at the Conqueror, for those who have been off grid or plan to go off grid or go somewhere where you're on your own, you need to be able to fix, service or access something that goes wrong. And, and the thing I love, and it's got to be from the military heritage of Conqueror, what I love about it is the fact that everything you look, touch and feel can be fixed with a screwdriver and a rivet gun and a few things like that. So if you're going right off the beaten track, you should be able to service this thing if something does go wrong. And again, if you're traveling um, in Outback Australia in particular, you need to plan for things to go wrong. They probably won't, but you need to plan for it. And that's the serviceability aspect of this. So that's a very handy, lot of pockets in there. It's what's called an inside outdoor, and, and which means that when you do close up at night time, you can access all the items that are in this door from inside. Um, I know that sometimes in, in the bright areas, you can put a couple of sleeping masks up there as well. So if you're fumbling around at night time looking for them and you're sensitive to light in the morning, you can put that in there. Um, sometimes you can access your fridge from inside when the kitchen's closed. And however, it is under the bed. So sometimes what we do when we travel, put a couple of bottles of water in there because usually it's pitch black dark. Um, you know, you're tired. You've been sitting by the campfire. You're a little dehydrated. Grab a couple of bottles of water and off you go. So it's a very, very good um, usable door, which leads me to the pantry. And this, if you haven't had a look at this pantry, you need to. Okay. Now I'm going to open this all the way around, okay? What you have here is your kitchen pantry, okay? Now remembering this unit we're looking at, this is brand new. So we have odds and ends and, and, and ratchet straps and, and jerry cans and all sorts of things in there. But the thing I like about this, it's got good deep shelves, especially this bottom one. The bottom one is absolutely sensational. You can put cereal boxes, porridge boxes, whatever you want in there. Um, for those that have been traveling with buckets, um, we all know that you've got to try and put the, the cereal boxes on the side or get the little ones. By the time they get out, they're squashed and, and um, trying to get the kids in our case to get their cereal out in the morning becomes World War Three. So it's nice to be able to have a situation here where they can come, they've got a serving bench, they can, put their, they can get their bowl from the kitchen, they can put their cereal in, they can grab their milk, they can sit down on their table and they can actually enjoy the camping experience without having to go through a, a, a family debacle. You've got um, 240 power in there, you've got a light in there, these side pockets fit a fair bit in them um, your first reaction is, well, you wouldn't put biscuits in there, of course, because uh, when you do close it, if you pack it too high, your biscuits will become crumbs. Um, but we put tea towels, we put um, barbecue wipes, we put um, sanitary wipes, all those sorts of things in there, glad wrap, napkins, things that actually can be squashed up a little bit against the back door. Uh, but as far as storage is, concer in, is concerned, I can tell you from a family of five, you, you, this is more than enough room than you'll ever need. The other 
Um, the other point here as well, especially if you're in the wind, you can block the wind from this side because when you close this door up, this little latch goes straight over the edge. It locks everything into place. So this is not going to be flapping around um, if you don't want it to. But if on a nice, beautiful night, um, you may wish to have that open. And you know, there could be everyone sitting over there because that's where the sun is. So uh, the thing about good camping, I think, is the ability to have the, the, the choice. So you can choose what you want to do and how you want to treat this. But I absolutely believe that this is one of the greatest features. And for those of you, again, who have been used to packing up either boxes or having to open up to get things inside a caravan, uh, it, it just adds an element of stress and an element of ugh, when you're actually about to go away. Whereas this thing in the side of the garage, on the side of the road, whatever you want, you can lock it all up and, um, and, uh, and, and it's really practical. Under here, you've got some more storage. Another really good feature of this is these little clips. And um, so opposed to trying to get under there and you know, in some cases putting your head under, just put it up there, lock it into place, and in you go. You've got wonderful storage, very deep, good use of space, and, um, and extremely accessible. So you're not climbing in mud, you're not climbing anywhere to get anything. And then that just pulls straight out every opening door, including the side doors and the storage on the other side, they all have that little latch lock in, which I think is magic. Okay, we we'll close that up. Um, extreme heavy duty tyres, this thing will go anywhere. Take it anywhere you want. With the DO35 on the front, you've got a full 360 articulation. With the airbag uh, suspension, you, you, you can take this wherever you want to go. I think you'll get scared before this will get scared. Uh -huh. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the awning and about serviceability and about quality. A great feature is this switch right here. It's one of the smartest designs in the new MY21 series. All right. So again, let's put ourselves in the picture of camping. I think it's pretty important. Let's say it's dark outside and, and we're doing things. We've had a cook up, we've had a few drinks, a glass of wine. Um, when you're doing your pack up or your clean up, you've got a light here. This light is very bright. Um, you could probably play football under it, but sometimes you need a bright light. You drop something, you've got something, you're cleaning up, you want a bright light. But then um, you certainly don't want to have a nice relaxing drink from your bar under those lights. You just don't. It, it's too bright. So what happens here on the side, if you look up in the awning, there's the awning lights. Turn them on, turn them off. So they're almost, if you can see now across the awning here, they're almost like fairy lights. So what happens, um, you do see a lot of people actually, um, hang fairy lights from uh, hang fairy lights from their awnings, and um, and it's because it gives a nice ambient feel to 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 a nice night. It really makes a difference. Lighting's great, so having the switch here is unbelievably convenient. There's one on each side for both awnings, but the other thing as well, the switch is actually a proper press button switch, and that works further to my point that I was mentioning before about serviceability. Sometimes I've seen some camper trailers or caravans with wonderful technology and they might have a, a touch or a, or a swipe or something like that. Great feature in a showroom. When you're in Outback Australia, and I don't know if you can see the picture on the wall here behind us, this is the sort of area that we've got to head to with these. That's a proper switch. If something goes wrong, screwdriver, get it out, have a look, play with it, fix it, see what's happening. But the ambient light this gives off is by far the best I've ever seen in any sort of awning out there. Uh, we move, we start to move a little bit further around the back here. Now, when, when we anchor the side of the awning here to get the tension on there, what I also love as well is that the rope that we use, that's a little pulley rope, it takes two seconds and I can reach it and do it, um, but it also becomes a mini clothesline as well. So a couple of pegs, put your towels up there and, um, and that's going to be a great, um, a great little thing for you because especially in the wind or for those that have the portable um, the portable clotheslines, I don't know about you, but you head down the beach, have a swim, you come back, your portable clothesline is always on the ground. Um, and uh, the wind usually takes it. And there's enough pegging and things going on when you're camping. Do you really have to peg down your, your, um, your drying rack? I should hope not. So that's a really good feature. Now, what happens with this back shelf? This is another excellent storage space. Uh, it was designed for the likes of firewood. Um, you know, you can chock this full of firewood. You've got little eyelets here, so um, the camper trailer comes 
with, um, with the rings that go straight in there and become tie down points. You can tie whatever you want right across the back here. And, um, and this is designed to be a heavy duty style camper. Okay. This is a new addition for the, for the um, MY21 from Conquer International. And again, a, a bit of a signature of the Conqueror trailers was the ensuite on the, um, on the right hand side. Now the ensuite is a fantastic idea and this still has the ensuite, which means that you can put your entire awning around and you can put on all the side walls and essentially you've got an entire bathroom on the side of the trailer. So if you're staying somewhere for three days probably as a minimum, you definitely take advantage of the ensuite. But sometimes you're pulling over for a night or in, in the case of being in a remote situation, you might have a, a, a convoy of three or four cars and, um, and you just want to pull over and you want to have a shower or you, you know, your, your kids or your wife wants to have a shower. I can tell you from experience, you are not going to set up an entire ensuite. As easy as this is, you wouldn't even do that in this trailer and um, because you're tired, you've been driving for eight or nine hours, you've been in the blistering sun, that's not what you want to do. So that, that feedback has been received by Conqueror and now what happens on the rear here is that you've got a little shower cubicle, okay? Now, again, I think when you're camping, things need to be simple, okay? And if we look at how simple this is, fold that out, there's weights at the bottom which make it sit down onto the floor. You click your little arms in, you're done. There's actually, there's a shower cubicle. And all that needed to be done for this to happen, which was a really good design, was we need to, to extend the shower arm because the shower arm has to come into here. So the shower arm now, instead of being um, yay long, it's about four meters long. It fits in there quite easily. It's not a tight fit, so it means if, if you're in a situation where you've got a young one and you're trying to shower the young one, you can actually still get down and spray them. Uh, the good thing is remembering, I mentioned before, 150 litres of water, it's a good size tank, but if you're on the beaten track for a while, you want to conserve every little bit of water. So spraying little Johnny from up here, which I have seen in some trailers, is not ideal because you'll end up using a litre or two more water. So that is how simple this, um, this shower tent is at the rear. And I've got to say, it is one of the smartest designs that I've seen in a trailer yet, because what it allows you to do is pull over and in two minutes, as you can see, even in this situation here, have a look at this. So let's just say we've pulled over on the side of the road or someone's had a shower. Here we go. Let's also think about real life situation. If someone has a shower, this thing's wet, right? So when someone has a shower and this thing's wet, what do you need to do when you get home? Well, when you get home, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to um, put, the, uh, put the tent out again and you're gonna need to make sure that it dries. So again, when you get home, usually you're tired, usually you've had enough for the day. So in this particular case here, you can get home in two seconds, you can take the shower tent out, let it flap around in the wind for a while, dry off, off you go. So there she is, zip that up and she's done, she's away. Um, the other point, actually barbecue, again a conquer, a signature, they're famous for it, I love it. Uh, pull up somewhere, have a fire, don't waste the charcoals, um, put the charcoals under this bad boy or put this on top of your fire and then all of a sudden you've got your griller plate. Uh, I have used these, they are fantastic um, and they're also a real camping experience. And with your full size spare tyre at the back, and your emergency spare stub axle. If something goes wrong, it, remember the word serviceable comes up again, extremely serviceable. Take off the stub axle, put the new one on, off you go. Couple of jerry cans, LED lights. I think that finishes off the back quite nicely. So if we move across now to this side, this is the ensuite side. There's your button for your awning lights. Same button as on the other side. And let's just talk a little bit about the power adapter. So this power adapter is unique to the Conqueror. It means that if, you, um, if somebody takes your power cord, never heard of it happening, but if somebody does take your power cord, then this will only work in the Conqueror trailer to reorder one when you need the VIN number of the actual trailer. So it's that little bit of added security that you can actually have when you're camping because nothing worse than someone taking your power cord. But again, I haven't heard of it happening, but prevention is the best thing. 
Same storage box on the side. Nice polycarbonate windows here. You got the midgy, um, midgy proof fly screen. So when you're inside, nice bit of breeze can open up and off you go. Um, another design I'll just talk to you about is the roof. You know, the, everybody knows that in the MY20, the roof became one component and it lifted up in one go. I think that was a really good design and, um, and it moved away from the hinged roof. But you'll notice that this in the MI21 series has two side windows. And, um, and you'll notice in the first of the lift up roofs, it has one side window. And that was a design improvement that was put in actually by the international team. The reason being is when you pull it down, it's easy, really easy. But when you've got one big long side window, for those of you that have ever dealt with you know, canvas and mesh and so forth, it had the tendency sometimes to pop out a little bit, so you had to go around and lift it up a little bit more and pull it in and do those sorts of things. Whereas you can see here, the, the um, partition in the middle sort of flexes inward. And when you pull this thing down, I've, I've done this roof, I've done it carelessly, I've tried my best to see if I can actually get um, the canvas and the midgy proof uh, fly screens to catch, and they just simply don't catch. That was a really good design feature. Um, a lot of questions come in about what about solar? What about solar? Solar on your roof, that's a big no-no. So in our situation, we have no solar on the roof. Solar on the roof could have worked if, you were, if the roof was the old design of the hitch and you can try and follow the sun. But in reality, sometimes where you want to camp is not ideally where the sun is going to be captured. So we have thought of it though, and what comes standard with the UEV 490 Platinum is you get two solar blankets. And you've actually got, um, you got a solar input on both sides of the trailer. So you can have one on this side for the afternoon sun and one on that side for the morning sun, for example. You can go out and enjoy your day, go to the beach, do whatever. As the sun moves across, you, you're going to have 100% of, uh, of the sun the entire day. Very, very clever design. And, you know, they've, um, you can angle them up, you can move them, you can do whatever you like. Uh, so I think it's a really good, clever design. So you can see the shower cord is the longer shower cord. So it reaches the back easily, as I mentioned before. Reaches just here if you'd like to have or utilize a closed ensuite. But the other benefit of being a nice long cord as well is if you wanted to set up a little bit away from your camp, um, let's just say, for example, the water might be slapping down or that might be a nice shaded spot. Who knows what the reasons are? You could set up a little shower tent and this would still reach nice and easily and you could shower wherever you want. Or you can hose things off. Kids come back from the beach, come over here, hose them off away from the trailer come back over, off you go. Because again, for those campers out there, when the kids put their feet underneath um, the tap at the front, then whatever's on their feet is now under your feet um, before you get in the trailer. So that's a really good little feature. And your inside out door on this side is exactly the same as the other side, but this is designed to keep your toiletries. And, um, and it's a clever design. Uh, you know, uh, when we've camped in the past, we've had our toiletries in a, in a clear, toiletries bag, you end up shuffling through it, ends up getting dirty at the bottom, all those things and you know you can't find what you want. Sometimes the kids go and shower without soap in the end because you can't even find it. So what you do here, you line it all up. If you want to have a shower at the back, you grab your three bottles of shampoo or your soap, you go, you shower, you do everything you've got to do, you come back here, you rack it all up and you're done. So it's very, very good. We put face washes in the top there as well and sometimes we put some emergency medical supplies up here. So you never know what's going to happen um, when you're out in the field. So uh, we use that as a, as a medical supplies, but really, really good, nice shelf. And if you are showering next to the trailer and you do actually have the ensuite uh, walls enclosed, then you can actually shower right here with everything at your hands. So it's a very, very clever design. And remember, again, inside out door. So whatever you've got in this door or in these pockets at night time, when it's Betty buys time, you go inside, you've got access to everything. Now I'm nearly finished the outside, I'm nearly finished. We have one more, one more drawer to look at. So again on this side, this is, um, this is designed to have another sink and um, we are yet to install the sink and hot water in this side, but this will have a hot water and sink. Or um, in, in the case of our personal trailer, we use this as towel storage and more storage. Um, but, then, um, but then again, I think storage is king when you go camping. So you, if you, if you want to have a sink with a hot water basin where you can brush your teeth or be away from everybody and use a sink, you can. If you want to have additional storage, if you come on and have a look inside here, that is an enormous bucket of storage. 
So, um, and when you go camping, uh, for a family of five, I can tell you, uh, you, you know, you put five towels in a bag, you realise how small that bag actually is. So having all your towels, uh, dirty laundry sometimes, uh, it can be a really handy um, tray to have. All your seals here, these are automotive grade seals. Uh, this thing does not get any dust in it at all. You can pressurise the cabin if you're going through a very dusty area, especially Outback Australia. So you've got that extra element of, um, of dust protection. But I can tell you, having been through some extremely rough terrain, uh, you wouldn't get a speck of dust in any of these. Okay. So moving back around to finish off our, our tour of the UEV 490 Platinum, we find ourselves back at the front. And, um, and if you recall, only 20 minutes ago, we were at the kitchen. We've had a good time walking around the outside of the 490 Platinum. So hope you've learned a few things. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, give us a comment or a note at any time. Drop us a line. We love talking all things Conquest. So thanks, and I'll see you out there camping.